In this tutorial, we're going to take a look at how we can create spun and turn components, just like those you see on the screen using the turn and spin modeling function in the software. Okay, so let's start by actually closing off this file and opening an existing one. So let's go up to File and Close. Okay, so let's open an existing file. So if we just click on the Open an Existing File option on the left here and choose our Turn and Spin 3D Modeling CIV 3D file. Now, as you can see, we're presented with what looks like half of a salt and pepper pot. But before we do a deep dive into the turn and spin guide options, let's have a look at some of the data we have on our worksheet. So if we pop up to the layers tab, you can see we've got five individual layers, two of which are for turn shapes and three are for spun shapes. Right now, the uh, turn shape one pepper pot is our active layer, and we're just going to keep that on. And let's just come out of the layers tab for the moment. So we don't have a full representation of the pepper mill, but rather a half representation uh, with a sort of theoretical center line running down the middle here. And that can be either to the left hand side or to the right hand side, but we do not need the full profile. So with that, I'm going to select the profile now and I'm going to come into the modeling menu. And as you can see, we've got our core modeling functions at the top here. And I'm just going to go ahead and select the uh, create shape by spinning or turning a vector tool. Okay, so you can see you have the different modeling functions here. You have the uh, turn function, the spin function, the ability to uh, change the height, the ability to change the combine modes here, as well as the ability to change the name that you want to give to your component. You also have the ability to reset uh, your view where you may choose another vector if you wanted to work with another vector that you have here instead of the one we currently have selected. Okay, so with the overview of the turn and spin functions, I'm just going to go ahead and hit apply and you'll see on the screen that there is what looks like a 3D model. But I'm actually going to tile our views here so you can see the 3D model in effect. On the right hand side, you can see what looks like half of a salt and pepper sh uh, shaker. So how does the software actually determine the height for the uh, model we have on the right here? Well, what it actually does is it takes any point from the left hand side profile to the theoretical center line. And that is how the software has determined the height uh, of this model here that we have in the center line. And if I just hover my mouse pointer, if you just keep an eye on the bottom right hand corner, right around here, where I'm hovering my mouse, uh, you'll see that we have the true X, Y, Z location uh, where my mouse hovers over. You'll see the Z height and the X and Y values for where the pointer is currently. So if you look at the widest part over here, so if we look around the widest part of this model, you can see that the height is at 1.35 roughly. And if I do the same on the left hand side, if I hover over our 2D representation, and if I hover over the center roughly, you can see that I get around 1.35 here as well. Okay, so let's actually look at how that height is calculated. So for now, I'm just gonna close out our turn and spin form, and we're gonna go up to the drawing tab, and I'm gonna select our draw line tool. So when we click on that, we're going to be presented with our crosshair here to draw a line. So we're just going to pop down to the bottom and put our mouse pointer over the bottom vector on the left hand side here and go all the way up the middle up to the top to join that up. And then we have our center line. So let's just close out this form. And now we want to go ahead and select the measure tool so on the left hand side under the edit objects. And we're going to come to the widest part or around the widest part on the left hand side of this vector here. Just click on that. And then we're going to follow this guideline here. This very helpful guideline to the center of our line here, or sorry, the center of our model. And we just click in the middle there. And as you can see up here, we've got roughly 1.35 inches. And if you recall, when we hovered our mouse over the center line, the theoretical center line, the widest part over here as well, we got roughly one point. Three, five, and that is how that height is actually calculated. So with that in mind, let's go ahead and close our measure form down and we can delete this line. 
Okay, so we just saw an example of where the software governed the height of our model by using the left-hand side vector and the theoretical center line in our software. Now, what if we wanted to govern the height ourselves? Well, we can go back up to the modeling tab, make sure our component here is selected, go into the create a shape by spinning or turning a vector tool. And you can see at the moment that we have the scale to exact height option turned off. I'm just gonna go ahead and turn that on make sure that our uh, vector on the left hand side here is selected so we can turn this shape 180 degrees and i'm just going to reset this for the moment because we're going to be starting a new component or a new version of this component rather and i'm going to change the height to 0.3 inches and then i'm going to hit apply okay so right away you're going to see that we have a much shallower shape it's still coming up vertically but then it's rounding off very quickly to get that height of 0.3 that we've specified over here now again if you ever wanted to check this you could just go ahead and hover your mouse pointer over the center here and if you look in the bottom right hand corner of the software you can see that it's 0.3 okay so i'm just going to go ahead and change this value now to 0.5 and just make it just a little bit bigger and i'm just going to go ahead and hit, hit apply and you can see that it's added just a little bit more to our shape now and it's got a little bit higher in its height and again if we hover our mouse pointer over the middle here you can see that it comes out to roughly 0.5 okay so the next stage is for us to look at another turned example so with that said i'm just going to go ahead and close out this form for the moment and we're going to take a look at our next turned shape example Now, just before we look at our next example, let's just reset our screen here. So if we just press on the Z button up here to reset our Z uh, view on our 3D preview over here, and um, we're gonna go ahead and select component one and delete this. So right click on it and delete. Don't need that at the moment. And we're gonna come back up to our layers tab. So at the moment our active layer indicated by the vector in the page just here is our turn shape one pepper mill. So we want to turn this off, turn on our turn shape spindle, and we're just going to make this, this the active layer as well. Okay, so with vector already selected, let's come back up to our create a shape by spinning or turning vector tool, and we want to make sure that we're set to turn. Uh, we do not want to scale to an exact height in this scenario, and we're just going to go ahead and hit apply. Now, right away, you can probably tell that this is not what we actually wanted or expected. We actually wanted a full spindle, uh, but instead we only got part of the spindle and that part of the spindle isn't particularly correct either. So we need to try and work out what the issue is. And what we can actually see on the screen is that there's a center line running right down the middle of this spindle. Now, unfortunately, the end and the start point of this line do not have any legs on them, which would allow the space for the spindle to turn correctly and represent the entire spindle. So let's go ahead and try and fix that. So let's just reset our view here. And we're just going to close down this form for the moment. We're going to come up to our drawing tab, choose our draw line tool, and I'm just going to hover my mouse pointer over the left hand side here and click. And we're going to use our smart snapping. And there we are. We find the center line there. And we'll just come across until that's in line with our vector and just click again. And we're going to do the same on the other side. So again, we can just hover our mouse pointer over the end here. Click, come to our smart snapping on the left hand side. If you wanted to make sure it was in line with this line over here, you could actually hover your mouse pointer over this one and just follow this uh, grid line across and just snap here and click and there we have our legs and let's just close out the form for the moment okay now if i actually click on the vector you'll notice that this is a separate vector to this one and to this one and we actually need to be one uh, joined vector so i'm just going to go ahead and select all of these right now and then we're going to come over to our edit objects and join join open vectors tool and we're going to set our tolerance nice and low. So I'm just going to go for 0 0.001. And you can see here that we've got three open vectors. We've got uh, vectors after joining, close, zero, and open, one. So we'll have one vector remaining afterwards. So let's go ahead and hit join. And let's just close out our form. And you'll notice if you click on that vector now, we ha now have a single vector that we can use 
to uh, turn our spindle. So let's uh, go back to our modeling tab and let's give this a try now. So let's go back into our create shape by spinning or turning a vector tool, click on that, and we've got our vector selected, hit apply, and there we are, that looks much better. That looks like a uh, what we were intending to get in the first place, which is our spindle. And as you can see, because of the legs, it's now mapped around that theoretical center line here and produced the full spindle that we were looking for and not the part of the spindle that we had earlier. Okay, at this stage, we can actually make some further modifications to our uh, shape and 3D model here. So if we go ahead and make sure our vector is selected, and if I hit N on the keyboard, you can see it's gone into node editing mode. Now, these points here, all these nodes, make up this vector. And as you can see, I can actually manipulate some of these. I can move them around. This green one denotes the start points for our vector here and the direction it's going to go in. Okay, so I want to actually add in a point just about here where you can see my mouse pointer hovering. So with that mouse over the line I want to affect, if I just press I on the keyboard, it will insert a point there. As you can see, it's right there now. And I just want to go ahead and click on it. And I want to move this in just slightly and make a slight change to this model. So with that uh, node now moved, I'm just gonna make sure the uh, line is still selected. And I'm just gonna hit apply on the form. And as you can see straight away, it's made a bit of a change to our 3D model. Similarly, if you wanted to affect uh, multiple points at the same time, make sure your vector is selected, hit N on the keyboard, and we can hover over the points we want to uh, select. So in this scenario, I want to change this part of the model here, which is just here and I want to click on the first node. I want to click on the second node by holding shift and I'm just gonna drag that down very slightly to about there, hit apply. And as you can see, it's just brought that in just a little bit. So that just shows you some of the options you have with the turn uh, tool in the turn and spin guide. But let's go ahead and now look at some uh, spin examples. So we're just going to go ahead and click reset. And I'm going to close this form. And I'm going to come up to my layers tab. I'm going to turn off the turn shape uh, spindle. And I'm going to turn on my first spun shape in this scenario, which is a plate and make sure that that is the active layer. So what we have on screen currently is a vector that represents a cross section of half a plate. So with that selected, we're gonna come up to our turn and spin tool, and we're actually going to make sure that we have checked the spin option this time. And we're actually going to spin this vector around this center point here to create a plate. And I'll demonstrate that for you by hitting apply. And as you can see, this vector has been spun around this center point to create this vector here. And as you can see, this part of the vector on the edge here where it goes up and curves and then comes vertically down is represented by the edge of the plate here as well. Okay, so let's just reset our view there and we're just going to reset this as well because we're gonna take a look at one of the issues that you may encounter while using this tool. So let's just hit reset, close this down, and we're gonna take a look at our next example. So if we come up to our layers tab and we're just gonna turn on our spun shape two ripple and make sure it is the active layer and turn off our spun shape one plate. Okay, so with that vector on screen at the moment, everything looks okay. So let's just select that vector, come back up to our form. I'm gonna keep all these settings the same. and I'm just gonna hit apply. Now, right away that you can see that the majority of the model is actually okay. It's been represented quite well and it's spun around. However, you can see that the left-hand side of the model here has been cut off. And that's actually because if you look at what the uh, spin tool actually does, it says it spins around the left end point. And as you can see on our worksheet, our left end point isn't quite central. It's actually far over to the left of our worksheet. And that is why you're seeing uh, the sh model missing the left hand side here. So let's go ahead and address that and let's reset this for the moment, close our form down 
and we're just going to go ahead and click on our vector, click on it once more, and we're going to hover our mouse pointer over the bottom left hand corner, click and hold down, and we're just going to come over to the left hand side. You can see snapping options are on, and you can see that we've got our guideline for the center of our worksheet here. So we're just going to follow that along until we find the very center of our worksheet, which is just there, and we can let go. And now we can be confident that our shape should fit into this worksheet. So let's go ahead and have a look and let's click on our vector back into our form. Keep all these settings the same, hit apply. And as you can see, we have a much better result with our model represented fully on our worksheet. And that looks great. OK, so let's just reset our view here and let's look at our final example. So once again, let's hit reset in our form, close that out for the moment. Let's come back up to our layers tab, turn off our spun shape to ripple, turn on our spun shape three, and let's just make that our active layer. Okay, so as you can see, we have the vector on our screen, which has two V cuts, as you can see here. So the vector straight goes down to a V cut, straight goes down to V cut again. So let's just have a look at what that will look like in our form. So let's come up to it. And again, choose the same settings, make sure it's still on spin, hit apply. And right away, you can see that we have two issues. The most obvious of which is that the top of the model has been cut away here. Um, but also, if you manipulate the view on the 3D side here, uh, if we look at our 3D preview, we can see that these darker sections here are actually at Z0, and these lighter sections are actually in negative space. So what's happening here is you've got this plane on Z0, negative space, Z0, negative space, and then Z0. Now that isn't quite ideal, so let's have a look at some of the ways that we can address this. So let's just reset our views here, and I'm just going to reset this and close out our form so we can have a look at fixing some of these issues. Okay, so if we hover our mouse pointer just over the end of our uh, vector here, you can see that it's just in positive Y. Now this may, may be why you're actually seeing the top of the uh, model being cut off here because the vector is actually in positive Y and not quite central, so we'll need to fix that. But at the same time, we can also add some legs onto the end of this vector, just like we did with the spindle, to make sure that the uh, model lifts out of negative space and spins correctly and uses our material in the right way. Okay, so if we just go ahead and click on our vector, we're going to come up to the drawing tab now. And we're going to click on the draw line tool. Let's just hover over the left hand uh, side of our vector, click on that point there, come over until we find that center line. Let's just follow that all the way over here. And we're just going to left click once we found the center, hit the space bar on the keyboard, and we'll come back over to the right hand side, hover over the point, click, click once more, and we're just going to close out that form. Now, if you remember, we had to make sure that all these vectors were actually one vector. So let's go over to our uh, Join Vectors tool. So if we go over to Edit Objects, Join, Join Open Vectors. Again, nice and low tolerance. Uh, no closed vectors after joining, just one open vector, which is what we want. So let's just hit Join and close out that form. And there we are. We have our one open vector. Okay, so with our brand new single vector, let's go over to our modeling tab again. And with it still selected, go up to our form for our spinning or turning a vector. Keep these settings the same, hit apply. And as you can see, our issues have been alleviated. We now have our model in the center of our worksheet. And that's because this leg that we've added here has allowed this vector to spin around this new center point here as opposed to up here where it was in positive y and as you can see on the right hand side in our preview if i just tilt the model slightly that our model is in positive z which looks great so let's just reset our view for the moment and we can just hit close on our form okay so as you can see we went through several 
different examples of where you could use the turn and spin tool and the various ways in which you may encounter some issues and how you can get around those issues by using the powerful tools at your disposal within our software. I hope this has been helpful and we look forward to seeing you in the next video.